All right, let's get into this Sugar Bowl. Should be a fantastic matchup in a lot of ways. You know, from the skill positions, this is the game that has more of a potential to be like a big, high-flying, high-scoring game between Washington and Texas. Both of these scoring offenses in the top 16. You know, defense hasn't been the strong suit necessarily for Washington, and the pass defense for Texas at times has, has struggled. But how is this thing going to materialize? Well, let's look at Texas first, and let's take a look at their offense, because it's not just their ability to throw the ball. I actually think it's been their ability to run the ball and be effective at the line of scrimmage that has really transformed them into this team that can be more consistent. I think there was no better example of this than the last seven minutes against Alabama on the road earlier this year. So Alabama has three timeouts. There's 714 left in the game and it's first down. And what does Texas do? They just decide to start pounding the rock and running the football. And once Alabama realizes this, what, what do you start to see? Now it's second down. And what do you start to see? They're loading up. Now you got nine guys in this run front. And yet, what does Texas do? They turn around and hand the ball off. And look at the movement that they get. Look at the second level blocking that they get. Far different than that fast flow that you saw from Alabama against Georgia. And look at this. Jonathan Brooks not contacted unless he's down the line, uh, down, down the field, if you will. And he's all the way in there. And now you get a third and manageable. What do you do on third and manageable? Well, you can do this. This is a third down. Everybody knows you've got to convert. And it's the most important play of the game. Again, you know, there's a little over five minutes left. If you get this, now Alabama is going to have to drain their timeouts. It's a two possession game. What do you do? Do you throw it? No, it's Jonathan Brooks. And look at the blocking up front. Look at them cover up those guys and look at them not allow that fast flow of linebackers to get over the top. So their run game is going to have to show up against Washington. Okay, that offensive line is going to have to be dominant against Washington. And I think that they can be. And then they're going to have to be explosive on the outside throwing the football with Quinn Ewers. Now let's take a look at their defense. Their defense has to get pressure on Michael Penix. If they don't get pressure on Michael Penix, it's, it's a wrap. Washington's going to win the game. And they need to do it with just four down because like against Alabama, you got to have seven guys in coverage because of what the wide receivers for Washington can provide. So here, what you got is a great structure where you've got three over two on the top side. You've got basically man down here with a free safety and they do a really good job in this coverage of staying home and not allowing an open receiver to pop up and what happens they get home with the rush and that's what they've got to do they've got to get to Michael Penix in that back end that pass rush is going to be so important here's another example of it again against Alabama early in the season and you've only got a four man rush and you've got seven guys in coverage so Bama's going to send everybody out all five free releases and you're trying to get somebody open but guess what? Nobody's open. Why? Because they play this really solid zone behind it. You've got four underneath players right at the sticks, and you've got three deep zone players behind it. So there's no big plays. Milrow's got nowhere to go with the ball. And look at the effort up front. What do they do? They get home. So they've got to have that opportunity. They've got to create those opportunities to get pressure on Michael Penix. Because if you don't, he will hurt you. Watch what he does for Washington offensively because this guy throws the ball with great leverage and he's one of the best passers in the country. Their passing game is tremendous. If you don't get to him and he can just sit in the pocket, watch him just attack the slot. He sees a free safety back here and what does he do? He's got man-to-man -man coverage in the slot. He doesn't throw him inside leverage, he throws him outside leverage. This is the difference between being a great thrower and a great passer. He's a great passer because he's always missing on the correct side. Look at that ball away from the defender where only his guy can catch it. Gosh, he does such a good job of that. This is one of the reasons why I love his ability and even projecting him towards the next level. Here's a play against Oregon in their first matchup. Watch, they got this nice little stack release and he's got the win. He sees the man-to-man. -man. He sees the safety kind of with parallel feet. He squats. What does he do? Boom. He throws it over the top with great timing because he's got time. And look at this ball. Perfectly thrown. Great leverage over the top away from the defender where only his guy can get it. And that's a touchdown for the Huskies. These, these guys are so good throwing the football. So good throwing the football. But it, it is incumbent upon them to run the ball early in order to get those looks where you can take advantage of one-on-one -on -one or single safety coverage. Okay, so Texas loves to play two safeties back and try to stop the run with just their run front and what I would consider kind of a light box. 
So they've got to be able to run the football. Washington, that's what they did against Oregon. Let me take a look at this, this run game for Washington, and, and let me show you what I mean by that. See the two safeties for Oregon? They're trying to stay back. Why? Because you want to be able to defend the pass. So you've got this spread type of defense, and now all of a sudden there's really only six guys, maybe five guys in the run box. You've got to be effective running the football, and that's exactly what Washington was able to do against Oregon in the Pac-12 championship uh, game. Great job getting to the second and third level with those blocks and look at that a nice explosive run for a first down that's what you need why so that you can get the coverage to change so later in this game Oregon is going to have to bring a safety down because Washington has been good running the football you got a bunch set here you can run the ball out of that so you bring that near safety down but then out of the bunch set you're going to run and kind of explode out of it and throw the ball down the field against a single safety now you're creating one-on-ones and a single safety where you can work the middle of the field and here we go Penix has got time he's got a receiver Boom, he throws with great leverage, and it's a completion for the Huskies. This is what they do so well, and, and, and that's what I think is going to work for them against Texas. This is why I think it's going to be a high-scoring affair. I think Texas is going to be able to run it on early downs. I think they're going to be able to throw it with Ewers. Steve Sarkeesian is one of the great play callers and game planners in college football, so I would expect them early in this game to be going fast, score some early touchdowns, and then it's going to be about Pinnock's. Does he have time? Can he bring them back? It's going to be a phenomenal Sugar Bowl. I can't wait to watch that game. Last thing I'll say about these two matchups. For the first time maybe in the playoffs history, I honestly can make an argument for any of the four teams to not just win this game, but win the entire thing, the national championship. This is going to be a phenomenal playoff. I think anybody could win it. Michigan could win it all. Alabama could win it all. Texas could win it all. Washington could win it all. And for the first time as a college football fan, I'm looking at this and I'm, I'm, I'm real e really eager to see what happens. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoy that clip, make sure you click subscribe somewhere down here. From game highlights to exclusive interviews and rankings, we've got everything you need as a college football fan right here, College Football on Fox.